Danny is a dreamer. He's a marketing wizard, and he's based on the true uh, on a guy called Darren Cox. He had this idea to create what was called the GT Academy, and it was a competition to basically take the best gamer in the world and put him into a real car, race him on a track, and see what would happen. What's really interesting at the moment is because of the movie that came out in cinemas in the summer of 2023, a lot of the requests I get are, how the hell are you part of something that uh, created this Hollywood movie, uh, which is a new one for me. In the past, I've had a lot of requests for people to talk about my experience in Formula One. With Formula One's massive growth, specifically in the US, I've been speaking a lot about the Netflix effect, about the growth of Formula One, and the impact on Max Verstappen's dominance to the sport. The thing that I'm most passionate about is to speak to audiences of big corporations or big organizations where individuals want to be more innovative. That's where I've had my biggest wins and we were able to do that through different structures, different processes and in the end just being passionate about the subject that we were trying to deliver on. In fact, recently I've spoken on a number of occasions at universities and schools. Since the Gran Turismo films come out, a lot of young people want to understand how they can be innovative, how they can take their hobby, their passion, and turn it into a career. I really try and understand the business, try and understand their objectives, try and understand where they are in their cycle in terms of innovation, in terms of trying things differently, and in terms of what the audience needs to hear at that particular stage, and then work on the material around that. Of course, there's a place for the standard speech to be given. People have an amazing story that they can retell, and it never gets old. From my point of view, I really want to understand the company that I'm talking to, where they are on their journey, what sort of messaging does the management need to get across, and what do the employees want to hear as well? What is that message? Is it innovation? Is it just a story about how F1's changed? Is it the crazy story that I have about a Hollywood movie being made? So it all depends on the audience and the objectives of that particular company. In a number of companies that I've worked in, the key to having an innovative spirit is absolutely the senior management buy into it. If the top management don't believe in it and have set up structures and processes to allow that innovation to happen, then it just doesn't happen. I absolutely know it's very, very difficult for senior management to let go, if you like. And to innovate, you really do have to stop doing what you're normally doing. By definition, innovation is doing something completely different. And that is very, very difficult for established companies with strong processes, with strong management, with strong structures, it is really difficult to let go and let that innovation happen. And there's a great phrase that I keep using, which is you have to exploit the business you've got, but you have to go and explore new businesses. And that absolutely is critical. You have to let talented people, those people that have got an entrepreneurial spirit, that have got an innovative spirit, you've got to let them go and explore and see what the next steps are for this business. The key factors absolutely are to believe in what you set out to do right at the beginning and keep going. You absolutely will fail. If you are going out with an innovative mindset, if you are trying new things, you will absolutely fail. And unfortunately, that is part of the process, as long as you learn from those failures. But you can't stop your staff innovating just because of one or two failures. You have to just let them get on with it. Bite the bullet, if you like, grit your teeth, and believe in that definition of the mission that you've put in place over three, five, ten years, and let the process take care of itself. Stop worrying about the short term, stop worrying about the failures, as long as they're being used to fuel the next successes. My experience is, is that most teams, most middle management or junior management really want to innovate. They really want to change. They really want to approach things differently. And we all know in our hearts that actually they're probably the ones that know best on how to improve the business, what opportunities there are, what white spaces there are in the business. So the senior management have to 
trust those people. They have to give them the ownership. They have to give them the trust to enable them to go and find those and explore those opportunities and then deliver on them. Actually, whether you listen to Warren Buffett, you listen to senior leaders uh, within businesses that have grown during difficult times, they will tell you, now's the time to go after it. Now's the time to try new things, to attempt what your rivals aren't attempting. And that's a brave thing to do. I've got two examples. 2008, we all remember that, absolutely terrible time for most businesses, certainly in the automotive industry. Certainly at Nissan, we had some very difficult moments in terms of, of cash flow, which the top management, the board in Europe and Japan, allowed innovation. We launched GT Academy, which became the film Gran Turismo in 2008. And the idea behind that was we were spending all this huge amount of media money, which was cut back. And we were asked, are there any innovative programs? Are there any ideas where we could get the same impact for less money? Now that could be cost cutting, but actually that's innovation. You don't have to go and spend more money on innovation. You could just redeploy your resources, whether that be people, budgets, or effort in different places. And that's exactly what we did in 2008. The other big challenge we've all faced in recent years, of course, was COVID. I launched my Formula One media business in February of 2020. And if you remember, the first race of the Formula One season was due to happen in March 2023. I'd invested all this money with my shareholders and we were launching a brand new media brand in Formula One. The first race we were supposed to cover was in Australia. All my team were there and the race was cancelled. Now that could have been the end of that story. That could have been the end of that brand before we even started. But what we did was we completely flipped our business model within 24 hours and we put on virtual races. We held a virtual race where half of the Formula One grid and a lot of old Formula One drivers were racing against each other in the virtual world. And actually, that built our brand bigger than any normal standard racing program could ever have done. By the summer, we were live on ESPN for three hours in the US and around the world on YouTube with our new brand and really made an impact in a way that we could never have imagined. So we really took advantage of that crisis. And I think in retrospect, we use that crisis brilliantly. And I think that is a mark of a great leadership team, a great business is how do you make the most of a crisis?